guys, that's me back again, and I've got Hailey in with me, the girl from the Butterfly Needles. <laughs> Uh, if you have watched the previous tutorial how we have created this needles, that's them on how many weeks is it? Uh, just nearly four. So it's a four weeks. We have lost one gem and we have broke the farm needle. Um, so yeah, I will show you how to do the rebalance on those needles. Just wrap in. If you didn't see this tutorial, just go and watch it as well, like how those needles have been created. Oh, I we need to clip the gems off. They stick so much better with using the gel rather than the glue. Yeah, definitely they stay on much better with the base gel. Actually, too much good sometimes, you know, it's a nightmare to take them off, so. But how much the shape changed on the coffin, like they so ran it off. You have I been busy really... with your hands. Actually not, because I'm still at home. Okay. And I only worked two shifts in the hub. No, one. Yeah, they so ran it off, like. We need to make them nice and sharp again. I know, I think they always do that. It probably doesn't help that I have a three-year-old. <laughs> you do a lot for him. Mm. I think it's just from doing things, like, you know, picking up the things yeah. and, like, we constantly keep filing the needles and... This is so time consuming part. And I'm always like when the crystals are coming off, they always also shooting. So you have to watch so it doesn't jump on your eye or a client eye. So each time when I'm trying to clip it, I'm kind of shutting my eyes. <laughs> you can also file them off as well, but it's also pretty damaging to the e-file bit, so usually I rather to clip it off. Slowly, one by one. Sometimes they come off nice, like um, no. Sometimes they come off nice, like and uh, we chunky bit, but they don't want to this time. I'm kind of almost cutting the crystals into half. Oh, that's it. That was a good clip. The last one. <laughs> And here I've got one more. I don't think so. I will be able to. <laughs> Yay! So nightmare to take them off. Now if I on, and now we are just going to remove the color from the nails. Any lifting, reshape them, and do a fresh. Rebalance. Sorry, at the same time when I'm doing your nails, I need to check it if it's still in the camera. <laughs> And today we are going for some nice bright pink for a change. 
actually it's the second bright pink set of the coffee needles which I'm doing this week I was doing a nice Barbie set <laughs> pink and black they actually turn it out cool Have you lost any more weight? <laughs> um, since I last seen you, five pounds, I think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I hit my stone, so... You happy now? Not yet. <laughs> really? <laughs> Another five, hopefully. How many it is in the kilograms? I'm useless when it comes to the stones <laughs> and... Oh my goodness. There's 2.2 pounds in a kilo and I've lost uh -huh. 115 pounds, so maybe about 50. Which is definitely impressive. Okay, and that's the broken ta uh, thumb. So, <laughs> you kind of got two options with the broken thumb. Uh, basically, she messaged me, can she glue it in? Because my clients are not allowed to glue the nails back on, but it's more into the nail bed because then it is easy to catch on uh, greenies. But if it was just a free edge, uh, then it is okay because it's not touching the nail bed. So when something like this happens, you've got two options. Basically, when we're applying the tips, we still use the glue and the tip is just attached kind of to the nail. So that's what worked like a glue and that's what we will do it then you would just file much more product off to build up the nail secure the same way like you would start from scratch from the tip and um, so usually what I'm doing in those cases I will file like lots of product to see how secure this tip is and if it's secure you can just fill it up with the gel because it will work just like you have put the tip and you need to blend it that out and uh, if it comes off during the filing, that means it wasn't secure enough and you just have to cut it and strike. start again. Yeah, I think it's been any cut because it was like, I literally glued it and stuck it back on. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like here. Snap right yeah, on. I can see it, <laughs> your kneel there. But it's actually at the good place, so... Yeah. And that's what I want, like with all my nails. If they crack, they crack only at the behind the free edge, not damaging the natural nail. So after filing so much product off, you can see it, I kind of blended it, same way like we would glue it in the tip and you cannot even see the line and it was there. I'm still removing this, so it is kind of reaching the tip. Where I've got the glitter because it's encapsulated, I have to file it a little bit more just to take this glitter off. And then, <clears throat> where is the baby boomer? I just go and 
remove the gel polish. <laughs> Actually, I paint some French gel and top coat. I also, you can see it, I'm keep supporting the natural new and the sides when I'm filing as well, like, so the client doesn't feel it at sore. Actually, maybe once I put the gel on, then you could maybe search on the page the butterfly meal <laughs> so because my phone is in use so it wouldn't work with my phone You can also see that I'm constantly pulling her needle folds down because I don't want to cut her on those places. And that's the most messy part done. Just removing the old color. Now we can reshape them and get rid of any uh, lifting if it's there. So at this stage I would push back the cuticles. And there is some lifting on this one. So I'm always taking off the corners, like I don't want to cut her. Then I would still check them on myself to make sure they're really not sharp. I quite like last, I quite like also use a tiny bit of the blue scrap, which is a needle dehydrator, especially on the natural part of the needles, um, just to remove any oils which might be on the needle and now we need to get them back into the nice shape okay so i'll start with filing the free edge Blending any difference And here there is a little bit of the lifting on the side, so I really need to file that off It's actually good. This is not going to be an easy infill So what I'm trying to do is cut off the lifting and file just a little bit away from the lifting like so not totally on the lifting but on away from the lifting so the lifting can kind of fall off itself. Okay. 
And same on this one. So I'm always filing kind of product first and then once I file the product, once I file any lifting, I might go back and just do a couple scratches on the natural needle. So this way I don't over file the natural needle. And same on this one. That is so much sharper again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. more into the pointy. Mm -hmm. I still think like almond shape is better for your nails, like especially if they come back so rounded off. I used to like almond and I just went for coffee for like two years. Uh -huh. Coffee is my favorite uh, shape to wear, but if I'm like kind of doing quite a lot of stuff or when I'm even holding the files, they would run off a little bit. And then I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they are nicer often. So sometimes I need to brush the dust away to see what I'm doing. And I need to really cut off. There is a pretty decent lifting. So I don't want to file here. I want to file here. And then this bit just falls off itself. And I'm pushing this air away. Like, I, if I would file this way, I will keep moving this air, and eventually, we'll need to file away all the needle. So, I really need to cut off this place. I'm almost there. See, and then it just came off itself. And if I get like a lifting like this, like I would say it is actually quite a lot, I would prime the nails twice. But it's funny how all of them are in this side only. <laughs> I'm actually glad we don't have an easy one as well because then you can see sometimes I've got challenging ones too. <laughs> now I'm just shaping this one exactly the same like I did with the other ones. If the tip comes off that means it's not strong enough. If it doesn't come off it means that it's behaving the same like if I would just glue it a fresh tip.
door does so much better straight away when I just touch it like mm -hmm. V shape and straighten up the free edge. <laughs> And the left hand is much better condition, so I would assume it's just a matter of first needles, put it back on, and when we have no needles, we tend to use our needles much more often than we do when we have the, when we don't have the needles, we use the needles. What? Oh gosh. When we don't have the extensions, we tend to use the needles for picking up the things and doing things. And then when we have the extensions on, we tend to use more the sides of the fingers and the fingers itself. So it could be just a matter of kind of swapping from not having extensions to extensions and the next time they should be much better condition. You're searching for the picture. <laughs> yeah, I'll it. I know it was in the album, I think, Dorota's Neils 2010 or something. And those butterflies, they have been so funny, like looking butterflies just painted like with the black and slap it on top of the glitter. And I actually, my favorite ones, which I did for you, it was those um, white mermind with the knitted look. Oh, I so yeah, love them, yeah, like, they're yeah, really yeah. nice. That was the like, first time the knitted was kind of... Yeah, popular. Again, many, many years ago, but, like, I really love these ones. I think they were fantastic. Mm. Oh, yeah, th so that's the butterfly butterfly needles guys like which I have done on this hands <laughs> long long time ago see I told you July 2010 so that's when I put the picture up yeah, yeah just over 10 years ago so over 10 years ago my needles weren't nice I mean at the time they were <laughs> but <laughs> if you compare it now And then I think it is, there is also another album of those um, white ones. They were really beautiful, but it will be a different album. Yeah, there wasn't in that album. Mm. And I liked it, your French nails as well. Like the French always looks nice and classy too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after I have done this cleaning, I will use my bead cuticle to clean the cuticles and then check for any shiny places and do the scratches to make sure like there is uh, the nail plate properly prep. So yeah, I loved this ones like a lot. I can zoom them in. They were so cute and nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making your phone like dusty okay. now. I really loved that those uh, yeah. mermind. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like nothing over the top, but very nice. It's funny how the fashion is changing, like, you know, like years ago it was all those kind of glitters and everything and now it's more like in one colors, like not over the top looks, crystals.
learn. Mm hmm. So I put my e file into the reverse, and now I'm just doing the other side of the cuticles. And after this part is done, I'm going to do the check on them and like make sure there is nothing there. This needle doesn't like me. Couple scratches. Would you prefer on the ring finger the glitter encapsulation or the gel polish glitter? With the glitter encapsulation, we can use kind of chunkier glitter. Uh, chunkier glitter, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm really giving an, a second kind of check prep. I want to make sure they are all nicely prepped. You know what it else could be? Bloody hand sanitizer. Yeah. Um, that's another that's another tip guys for you like because I have noticed like um, the hand sanitizers they've got so many different ingredients like inside they are affecting the um, adhesion of the products as well so I usually rather use the same hand sanitizer I have been using for years uh, than any other ones because sometimes it might be a nightmare to take them off from the nail plate I quite also another tip like if you've got a client which has a problematic nails and they would constantly lift like I mean now if they lift it on me I'm just going to really go like crazy with my prep uh, but if they would lift again I would also double check if maybe clients not washing a hair on the same day when they're getting the nails done because uh, that could cause the uh, that could be another reason for the liftings as well the hair conditioners have lots of moisturizing stuff uh, which is supposed to hydrate like our hair and hair are built up from the keratin same stuff what the nails are uh, so those uh, products would really kind of go deeply inside the nail and it might be very hard to get rid of them from the nail plate even if we de dehydrate like a couple times like uh, they might be still some of those products in the nail plate okay but that's my prep done as good as I could <laughs> and I'm going to dehydrate like really properly strongly the nail plate like making sure I'm washing off everything what is there so really good clean and one more time, just to be safe. Got there something, what is that? They start squeaking, so that's a good sound. <laughs> I'm not too rough, not yeah. sore. Tell me at any point if you would feel. <clears throat> and after I have done this prep, an extra nail dehydrator, and then we will do a check how they lasted. <laughs> give them a couple seconds for it to dry and then universal air bond and I'm going to apply the universal air bond twice on those nails so only on the natural nail plate 
you don't apply it on the gel just on the natural nail and then a second run and if the nails are prepped this way like there shouldn't lift <laughs> Okay, I'm going into my fiber gel rice light rose and now we are going just put that in so it's a really nice color like <clears throat> another thing what you can do and it's helping like get a really good adhesion so take a scoop of the product and really press it hard into the nail like small scoop, but hardly kind of pressed into the nail. Like strongly pressed into the nail. It can be the tiniest amount of the product, but it has to be very strongly pressed into the nail. Like massage it into the nail. Mm -hmm. and set just exactly the same on this one and because I'm working with such a tiny tiny amount of the product I can put it on all the nails like this so uh, weird and quiet like it never yeah. is like this in here I was actually doing some recordings late earlier on on through the week as well but it was crazy like you know phones like someone yeah. always popping in and, and mm -hmm. today so actually I'm glad we started recording because it's nice and quiet and <laughs> I can chill change <laughs> and now I'm going to build up the structure on this nail so again nice and thin cap the free edges nice and thin Pick up the scoop and build up the apex. Change. If you start feeling hot at any part, just take your hand out, okay? I'm peeling the sides of the nails down really well. And now build up the apex. So I'm working one side, other side, and today is much colder than in other days. And you can see that the gel is behaving different, so I can work a bit slower. It's not as runny. Change. Yeah, it was really warm the last time. Yeah, it was crazy warm. Okay, now build up a apex on this one. Again, it is going to be not an easy one because it was filed away the lifting. So I need to make sure it's everywhere nice. There might be some places where I need to dispose more product and places where I need to apply less product. So I'm like making sure the gel is everywhere, join the places in, especially that some of the nails go a little bit into the bell kind of shape. 
So you really want to join that up because for coffin we tend to overfile the nails a little bit just to get those taper look. And now build up the apex. So I can work much, much slower this time. Change. So I'm pulling that nail folds down, making sure the gel is there. And the apex part again. One side, other side, one side, other side. And where I want to dispose more product, I'm pressing less on my gel. And if I want to dispose less product, then I would press it stronger. So I'm not applying any more product at this stage on the ring fingers because we're going to encapsulate some glitter. Another small scalp for those tiny pinky. Change. And the fam. So on fam, I'm needing much more product compared to the other nails because we have filed much more product away. Like basically, we have filed away everything. So I'm picking up the bigger scoop. Much more product. Change. Perfect. She knows how to hold the fingers. <laughs> Which make my job much easier. Because sometimes like, you know, people might touch it in the lamp or... But you know what to do. <laughs> but I've been years, obviously, yeah. so... But I'm actually curious as well, like, let me know guys down in the comments below, like, how your clients' nails are behaving, like, um, regarding the hand sanitizers uh, as well, because I, I need to get some conclusions. I like to always chat about those kind of different situations and learn from that. Change. So we need to find a nice silver glitter. Nice silver glitter. Nice chunky one. Gosh, they're all holographics. <laughs> oh no! You know what? Actually, you, we might be better off probably to use a mixture of this one with this one. I quite like this shade of silver. What you think? Yeah. Like, this is silver as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you think it would look Like, I, this one looks really the nicest, probably. And then I've got the holographic ones, too. Like, different mm -hmm. holographic ones. Whatever you think would look nicer. Hmm. Maybe go with the pure silver one. So, to encapsulate the glitter, no, we're going just with this one. I prefer it <laughs> the nicest. I need to apply nice and thin layer through the entire nail. Something so the glitter is going to stick to. Then take a nice and messy brush and put it on the nail. Yeah, this glitter is nice. See? Yeah, 
feels like Christmas. <laughs> and after I have applied the glue, wow, it's so beautiful. I would use the sponge and I would just dab the glitter in. Just so it doesn't stick out too much, so it's easier to encapsulate. Change. And going to do exactly the same on this one. And then put those nice chunky glitter. You can do so many different glitter combinations like ombre, like faded, like different colors as well. I love playing with the glitters. So nice. Perfect change. And I think the glitters like which are encapsulated are more shiny as well compared to the glitters from the gel polish. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And then I'm using the clear gel just to encapsulate this glitter. So I show you how I do it, guys. I usually do it twice. So I would take a small scalp and I would kind of scratch it like, you know, kind of... Uh, Remove any excess of the glitter, which might be there first. So nice and thin. Change. And then do exactly the same on this one. So just a nice small scalp. Like removing any sticking out bits and pieces. Change. And now time to encapsulate that. So I take another scoop, nice and thin layer, and then I pick up the product for my apex. Check the side view. And do the same on this one. So nice. Gosh, I wish I could record like this all the time from the sound. <laughs> so quiet. <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> Honestly, you should see it like my previous tutorials. I was, gosh, so like, I had to cut it through so many times. Like, I know, it's very quiet. I know, it's like, it's not normal. No, it's not normal. No, it's not normal. Change. So what else I can do is I can check, I can check the apex if there is any other places I would like to add the product on. I might actually do a small, small scalp there and there. So a bit closer to the cuticle on this one, on this one. A drop in there on this one on this one actually i'm going to put a bigger drop because it tends to going down the way so if i can file it from underneath i can add it more product on the top and i can kind of straighten it a little bit and then an extra layer for the thumb. Perfect change. And do exactly the same on this one. And then I show you guys like how I shape maybe on two needles. That should be okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm checking shape like if there is any places I would like to improve a little bit. Now we have to wait for the other hand to cure so just keep this hand in there. 
and then once the lights goes off we can swap it and that gives me a couple seconds to clean everything in here before I start shaping the nails so I would always clean my brush hide it away in the drawer so it's not never on the direct light like or a dust and then I always uh, I've got the time to clean the mess which is on the desk like you know from filing and everything I don't like to work when it's overly too messy and I like to keep my things on the same same place so give it maybe 10 seconds just um, be so just cleaning my desk by the way this cuticle oil smells so nice like really nice hello so I'm just going to file them. Okay, so they all ready to file. And I will show you on the couple nails. So coffin shape, like V shape. You can also see it like I had some missing bits and pieces. So I have filled it up with the gel like during the application. And now we need to get this nice coffin shape. Haley's nails are kind of those bell-shaped nails a little bit and I I tend to kind of really overfile her nails a little bit to get those nice sharp coffin look but I prefer it <laughs> No, I don't like it when they go too rounded like you know It's nice and sharp Thin up those free edge. We was also having a quick chat. Like uh, I just stopped the camera because there was a lady coming into the salon. We had the chat also about like some places doing uh, nails the structure wise same thickness all the way through, and then if they snap, they can snap in any point, and that can be really painful. So I'm blending everything really well around the cuticle area. Okay, and then file the glittery one. So the glitter always goes matte when it's filed. And then once we put the top coat, it gets its shine back. And because I have put enough clear glitter, uh, clear gel over the glitter, I can file it without of risking that I'm going to overfile the glitter or file it away. And I'm really concentrating on those cuticle area. I will be really uh, careful with it when I'm buffing as well to make sure it is all blended in so they don't lift again. Okay, the last two guys, just so you can see it. Because this one will be a difficult one too. See, another tip what I can give you, sometimes fingers are like this, where you've got more on the one side compared to the other side, and this one is behaving this way. I tend to push this and then press down this to kind of even out the finger. And when I press it, it's easier for me to see the shape as well, because otherwise we cut off too much in on one side. Go 
gosh, Haley's watching all her nails, like fingers, what they're doing. Sorry, I'm just breaking it through like as much as I can. Like normally I don't say this kind of stuff to the clients. <laughs> You've got nice fingers, like, and you're so photogenic on the pictures. I love using you as a model. Okay, that's some nice words to my model. <laughs> And then, but you guys know what I mean, like we we have to kind of work with different types of the nails and try to do our best so they look as nice as possible. But her fingers are really nice and she, she's really good at posing, like I always loved using your hands as a <laughs> model. <laughs> And again, I really need to blend that around the cuticle area because I don't want them to lift. And that's the one which will start growing down the way so eventually i might even replace it i actually do it for you usually isn't it mm -hmm. so eventually when the thumbs and the index fingers are really getting ugly i would kind of cut it off and start again but what i'm trying to do is when i'm filing i don't want to cut any more product in there i just want to get rid product which is there and kind of lift the nail up so it doesn't look as growing down the way So I'm not filing this place. It's more to lift the nail up. Kind of filing underneath. And then straighten it up. But to do this filing, you need to apply a little bit more product from the top, just so when you file it from the bottom, you, you've got some kind of room to do so. And then our thumb. That's the last nail I will show you guys and the rest I will do it on my own. So nice V-shape. We want to get that coffin nails. <coughs> Hiya. And then blend everything around the cuticle area. Is it the lighter one? It is three, it? Yay. Two minutes a maximum. Yeah. You can see how much thickness we've got also at the free edge as well. Perfect. Now I will take a buffer and I will buff them and I really need to go well around the cuticle area and then they're ready for a painting after we tidy up the cuticles even more. So the first buff I just go kind of really quick all over just like this and then I would gently file around the cuticle area. Like making sure everything is nicely blended. I don't want any catchy parts in here. So just file that nice.
smooth it out. Okay, so I'm going to do it on all of the nails and then I come back to you with the color application. Okay, so that's all the nails filed and I already tidy up the cuticles on the other hand. So I'm going to show you on those four nails as well what I'm doing. So I'm pushing them back a little bit and then just snipping any excess of the dry parts. And I like those cuticle nippers, they're two millimeters like long, so they're very small and precise. So nice and tiny. I never do it too excessive cuticle wars and uh, cuticle work. And you can see it, I'm just leaving it just before the color application. And this way, like also when I get the color so close to the cuticle, the, the growth is not bumpy because I've got only a gel polish. But the gel is so blended that you cannot see it where it is starting as well. Okay, after I have been done the cuticles, I can clean it, take a tiny bit of the blue scrap, which is a nail dehydrator, and I will just wash off any dust which might be there, but at the same time I will push the cuticles back even more, because during the, when we push them first on the beginning, they might move back a little bit, so just before the color application I will be pushing the cuticles and I might do it a couple times, so this way I can get really nice and close to the cuticle and the growth is not as visible, even if it's an old growth. That's why sometimes you see my nails as well, like, you know, six weeks old or something, and they're actually not too bad looking. Now, no skin-to-skin -skin contact, but I need to take this off. <laughs> so I can paint precise. And we're using Cheesing Dreams color from Neo Neos. If you want your color application to be really nice and neat, the nail needs to be clean. If it's not clean, you, you will get like those bits and pieces and... I'm really peeling the skin down as well. I want the color to be covering entire nail. See, in V shape, uh, nail, like you, bell shape, you're trying to push those corners as well so you can get a nicer shape of the nail. Just before the color application. I peel the skin down with this finger to make sure I get it everywhere there and then I can leave a half a millimeter on the side to don't show it at the shape of the nail. It's an absolutely beautiful color.
<laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because it's like never like this in here. I could see I was missing tiny bit product on the side. Change. <clears throat> So I can push the cuticle pretty decent again. And actually by the time I finish the painting the cuticle will go over the gel polish a little bit. So you get a really nice close to the cuticle application. And same this needle, really in those places, not sore. Yeah. If it would be kick me under the table. <laughs> so I'm really trying to get to this corner as much as possible and then avoid the sweet place there, just so the needle looks a little bit better. Holding the breath when painting. Actually, guys, like holding the breath in this masks on, like, but sometimes by the end of the day, I feel so like breathless, so dizzy. You cannot see it properly sometimes when they are too close on your eyes, and they they really restrict your airflow. And it's funny because I used to work with the mask on like all the time. I mean, you remember mm -hmm. as well, like no COVID and we was working with the masks mm -hmm. on, but not all day long. Like you was having some wee breaks, like with the maybe gel polish application or like where there was no dust around. Who is watching the little one? Yeah, Granny? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love the time probably spent together. Yeah, well, you just finished nursery at half two, so it's not too bad. Perfect change. It's good to have mums, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> So this is a second layer, just to make it perfect. Maybe not perfect, so just think like a perfect nails don't exist. You could honestly, guys, spend like two, three hours on the one nail and it is never going to be perfect. There will be always something. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying, honestly, I was trying. I think it's like with everything. But I like it how they change the shape like from so rounded off and... I'm actually curious how they will look when they come back again. <laughs> <Pretty sure. laughs> I hope they're not going to go from coffee to almond. <laughs> And coffin really needs those sharp, like, sharp look to, to look nice. 
I think it was just in the last few days they kind of changed the shape. Mm -hmm. You've been rough with cleaning. No? I don't. I'm you don't? To think, but I don't think no. so. No. <laughs> Nice and fresh again. <laughs> I have been bad with my nails. Like this one is so rounded now. Like if I'm doing things like gardening in the house, like and the hardest things to clean the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and also like uh, cella tape because I tend oh, to go yeah. like and scrape it, change. And because we was painting through the lockdown here as well, yeah. I was scraping the paints from the... <laughs> I still can see it some, you know? Like, it's so hard to take it off. And then the nails are really perfect too. I didn't say that, but... <laughs> I have been using them myself. It looks nice, like nothing overly too complicated, just mm -hmm. like a color and yeah, nice and a glitter, but it's nice. And mm -hmm. it goes with lots of things as well. Having any plans for the weekend? No. Not I was, really. I was supposed to be going to Glasgow, but... Um, yeah, the restrictions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a shame. It's just not worth it. Mm-hmm. I think it's just only going to get worse. No, please, no. I don't think necessarily up here, I think. In general, yeah. yeah I, I think like we might be a lucky ones, you yeah. know. Whereas Glasgow uh -huh. getting 100 plus new cases and we're getting like two. Is there two cases? Uh, in the whole of the Highland. So, ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Inverness. No, and yeah, yeah, so it probably most of it is happening in Inverness anyway yeah. because it's a bigger town, like, and we're yeah. just a small village, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I don't think there's any here. Mm -mm. We had just one mm -hmm. puger. So hopefully, no more for locals here. I mean, actually, that's the times as well when I'm happy. We live where we live, mm -hmm. you know? But even through the lockdown, like, you could go for, like, a wee walk with your dog, yeah, like, nobody. you know, and there is no one around, and, and like, see, we're living in a locky side, so, like, I mean, to the bridge and to the water, it's like, you know, one, richly, like, you know, one minute, yeah. even not one minute walk, mm -hmm. like, and you really beautiful place where you can just chill out and yeah. change. So I'm going to apply the top coat now and just to, sh to get those nice silver color. And we've got some bling. <laughs> and then apply on the other nails. So this is also a new top coat as well, which I'm going to try it. That's the block, the UV. Uh, so it's supposed to block the sunshine like and prevent the yellowing of the nails. And I'm going actually to test it as well. I'm actually curious. <laughs> I'm actually curious how... I love to test like things on the trusted clients. <laughs> and when I'm applying the top coat, I'm also checking how the light is reflecting on it. I'm making sure there is no bits and pieces and no dust. And if there is maybe a wee place which I'm not happy, you can always add a tiny bit of the top coat more to fix the shape, but then you would swap the hands and cure it <laughs> faster because you have put more product over it. I'm actually not happy about this one. <clears throat> this brush is pretty the gel polishes colors are so nice but i'm actually find it a difficult to working with like because they so thicken the consistency 
I'm not happy about the application in here. Change. So look also what I'm doing with the top coat as well. When I'm close to the free edge, I'm either pressing my brush harder okay, to cap this free edge, like to make sure it is uh, definitely covering the entire nail. Hi. Hiya. We just recording some tutorials, so I'm running like two, three minutes late. Ah, okay. I'm not running. No, you're not like. Two minutes. <laughs> You're just trying to be nice to me. <laughs> so that's my next lady just arrived, guys. And um, yeah, I'm just going to put the stop cut over it, show you the final look, and then take a picture of those nails as well. So I've got something nice for a thumbnail. And I hope you have really enjoyed watching this uh, tutorial. And you have learned something new from it let me know down in the comments below how you liking those tutorials from the salon and i think like i have recorded quite a few already and this is the first one which i have really enjoyed doing because we had it had been so quiet like in here like it was really no disturbs i only maybe press a stop camera once or twice um so i really felt not rushed with this tutorial like not stress about it and I really enjoy it. Perfect change. So that's all this hand done. And usually what I'm doing is at the end, when I cure the nail, I would maybe check some places if there is anything else I want to touch up with the file. At the co yeah, there is one in here. Just to, can you see how I improve the sharpness of the side? Like making sure everything is nice. Then our, our last step is to clean the client's hands. And apply the cuticle oil. Thank you. <laughs> Self-service client. <laughs> the light went off. You just take it, pop it back in. <laughs> oh. But that's just because you, you're getting yeah. your nails done for so many years so you know so when i'm taking the wipe i would go like and clean it really nice on the sides just to get rid of any dust and you don't want to send the client like with dusty and ugly hands you know i quite often uh, give the clients a wipe as well if they need to touch up their clothes like because um, especially on the black you can really see any kind of uh, dust so so nothing overly too complicated guys with the set but I'm, I'm actually happy that there was some lifting that the shape has changed because you could see what to do like to improve uh, the look of the nails and that's that's how the final look looks so yeah i'm just going to take a quick picture of them and glittery hacks and bye for now mm -hmm.